What is up everybody, it's Stas here, welcome back to another video. So in this video, we're going to be doing an overall market update, taking a look at the Dow Jones, the S&P 500, and the NASDAQ. We're also going to be doing a trading update, talking about what I personally did in the markets today, as well as some stocks and ETFs that I'm watching right now and looking to trade in the month of October in 2019. You guys, UGAZ, being one of the top ones that I'm watching right now. Now, and we're also going to be breaking that one down in depth in today's video as well as natural gas. So if you enjoy this video, if you do find value in this video, feel free to go down below, hit that like button, consider subscribing, and don't forget to join our Strive Smart Discord group chat and our Strive Smart Facebook group. That's how you can be further connected with me and the entire community, and all of those links are down below. And quick Instagram plug at Stasurfes. I'm doing a giveaway on my Instagram in a couple of weeks, so follow me there as well. So without further ado, guys, let's hop right into it. The markets just closed literally two minutes ago. The S&P 500, ticker symbol SPX, closed up 26 points, up 0.9% here. And today we got some good news, some optimism surrounding the trade war that China is willing to come to a partial agreement here if no additional tariffs are added or something like that. There was just some optimism surrounding the trade war. And we all know at this point, guys, when there's optimism around the trade war, the market takes that very well. The market typically does very well. And when there's negative aspects surrounding the trade war, more tariffs are slapped, we get some news from Trump on Twitter, whatever it may be, negative, you know, the markets get hit to the downside. So today was one of those days that we did get a, a bit of brief optimism ahead of the meeting here tomorrow, Thursday in Washington, and that ended up shooting the markets up. Again, 26 points for the S&P, up 0.91%. And we can see here on the four-hour chart, guys, we are holding this overall uptrend of this trend line that I have drawn out here at a higher low. So that's a good sign for the bulls out there. But on the broad perspective here on the four-hour, we can also see, you know, despite the trend line being held at a higher low, we are also in the process of making lower highs. And we are seeing a head and shoulder pattern here on the SPX, just like on the NASDAQ and the Dow. Dow Jones, right? And I've been talking about that a lot over these past couple of videos. So if you've been following the channel for a while now, you know what I'm talking about, right? If we go to the one hour chart, you can see we actually closed a bit bearish today, although we did have a very good day. I'll show you guys that in a minute here on the one day, one minute. But on the hourly chart, you can see lower high was confirmed pretty much here at the dump today towards the end of the day. And you can see it's a lower high based from the previous from the previous before that and so forth, right? And now if we break below the 50 SMA support and we start to push to that lower low, and especially if we break below 2,900, that's going to be the continuation of the downtrend in my opinion. And we may be going back down to 2,850 and so forth below that, which if we go back to the four hour chart, you guys can see, you know, if we get down to 2700 that general area, a big level of support is going to be around 2733 So if we go back to that one day, one minute, you guys can see how we gapped up this morning very nicely after yesterday's abysmal day in the markets, right? We went from 2892 at the close yesterday all the way up to around 2910, so we gapped up about 20 points. We uptrended for the entire day all the way up to around 2930, and then we saw that aggressive dump. And that aggressive dump again is what is making this lower high here um, pretty much confirmed if we fully break below this 50 SMA it will be 100% confirmed, but as of now, we are seeing that level of weakness right here in terms of the markets. But hey, if we end up popping out of here tomorrow, let's say we end up running above 2950, that's going to be pretty good from the bullish perspective. But again, from the bearish perspective, if we break that 50 SMA, that's not going to be looking too good, right? And on the five day, five minute, you're seeing a bullish cross here, but if we get the dump below, that's going to be bearish um, for 
for the S&P 500, right? Dow Jones Industrial Average today up 180 points, up 0.7% on the five-day, five-minute. You guys can see that same bullish cross that we saw on the SPX, which is the 50 SMA crossing above the 180 SMA. We're making higher lows. That's a pretty good sign. But then again, if we're zooming out a bit to the four hour, which again, it's why it's so important to take a look at multiple time frames, you can see that we are struggling a bit, despite what that five day chart, 10 day chart, 20 day chart may tell us. We can see here that this is a head and shoulder pattern, right? The left shoulder, the head, the right shoulders in formation now. Sure, we held above 26.2 today. We closed above it, which is a very strong level of support, but we're still seeing downwards pressure here as we are trending below, moving averages both the 180 and the 50 SMA. So I think, guys, especially since we closed pretty weak today. You guys can see this, if we break the 50 SMA, will be technically a lower high. You know, I think if we end up breaking back down into 26.2 level, you know, down back into the 25s, that's going to be bearish. That's going to be the Dow pushing to that lower low, continuing that downtrend, right? So some upcoming levels of support here, Despite this very good green day that we had, it's still worth looking at downwards levels that we can get to, especially if the trade war, you know, sees some more tension, which I personally think it will. Well, we may be going down 26,000, right? That's one level to watch, 25,6. That's another one, 25,3, right? And ultimately, if we get all the way down here, this would be the completion of the right shoulder, especially if we break this level. But ultimately, this major level of support is around 24,800. Hundred dollars. So watch that, guys. Watch these upcoming levels, right? Especially as th as things could get rocky here um, with these trade conversations. So going to the Nasdaq here, guys. Up. 0.9% right now, up 71 points today. Very, very good. But you can notice how we're still seeing a head and shoulder pattern, left shoulder, head, right shoulder. If we zoom in a bit, you guys can see we're struggling under this level of resistance at around 7,700 to around 7,710. We closed below that level and we're at a lower high from the previous trending under the 180 SMA as well. And now it seems like we're going to be heading below the 50 SMA and hold that level as a resistance the way the market is looking right now. So these are not good signs, right, despite us having a pretty solid green day today. And you have to realize, guys, the markets tanked a lot yesterday. So the fact that we are having a bit of a green day today is kind of like almost a rebound to yesterday's craziness. We sold off aggressively yesterday at least 1.5% average across the three major indexes. And today we got a rebound of around 07 to 1%. 1%, which really we didn't recover all of our losses from yesterday, which is why I'm thinking it is a rebound, right? If we recovered all of our losses from yesterday and some, that might be a bit of a different story. So if we look at the NQ, Back to that four-hour chart, guys. Again, we're seeing a descending pattern here, lower highs. The next level of support that I may be looking to see NQ go to is going to be around 75.90. We talked about this one. We held it a couple of days ago. We held it a couple of weeks and months ago back in the summer months of August, right? Or at least summer here in the United States. I know it's different for others in Australia, but I don't know if anyone's watching this video from Australia. But nonetheless, if we break 75.90, we go down to about 7,400. That would be another level of support. 72.9, that would be another level of support. And if we get all the way down to this level, we see a massive sell-off in the stock market. We get down to about 7,000. This is going to be the completion of the right shoulder. And if we break this level, guys, which would be very detrimental for all the bulls out there, we may be going down even lower, right? So overall, that is what I'm looking at right now in these markets. That's the breakdown. That's the technicals for today. If you guys have anything to add, feel free to do it down below in the comment section. Let me know your thoughts of today's performance, of the markets in general, trade talks, what's going to happen tomorrow, the rest of the week. I'd love to know what you guys have to think from your point of view. So let's talk about you guys and natural gas. Typically, I'd be doing a trading update right now, but honestly, guys, I did no trading today. I'm waiting to see 
if this is setting up for a monstrous red day tomorrow. This is what I'm waiting to see right now, which is kind of why I didn't trade. I'm waiting for my opportunity tomorrow to see if we do end up dumping from this rebound day. Again, we saw a rebound today. It wasn't anything crazy. We didn't recover our losses from yesterday, so I want to see if we dump here, right, on the S&P, this is what you're looking at. If we dump here, you know, I'm going to be able to trade TVIX, SPXS. These are two that do well when the markets are selling off, especially the S&P and when there's a lot of volatility in the market. So I didn't see any opportunities today. I didn't want to hop into a swing trade and get caught in a bull trap. So I'm waiting. I sat on my cash and I'm looking to get into a potential short in this market if it does end up getting rocky tomorrow. So now that we did that really quickly, let's transition to you guys and natural gas. So you guys right now, you guys saw the title of this video. Should you buy you guys before this pop? Well, first and foremost, guys, you shouldn't buy any stock, any ETF, any ETN that you don't understand that you have not done the research on for yourself, right? That's first and foremost. Don't buy anything just because I'm talking about it in a video or just because you hear it on the news from Jim Cramer or any of these other news outlets or any other YouTube channels, right? You shouldn't buy anything unless you fully understand it. This is just my personal opinion, what I'm personally thinking right now. So you guys, trades based upon natural gas for those of you guys that don't know. Natural gas slash NG this, when it goes up in price, you guys goes up in price at a 3x rate. It's a 3x leveraged ETN, right? Let's say natural gas goes up 2%, you guys is going to be up 6%, right? That is how that works. And we saw a massive rally in natural gas this past couple of weeks, starting at the 202 level, back in the beginning of August, we rallied all the way to 270. And a lot of people were arguing through my research of this that this was a rally that came a bit early, right? Because typically we see natural gas as heating demand starts to ramp up in the winter months, as really the cold months start to come through across the United States, the Midwest, Northeast. This is typically when we do get that rally as the demand for the natural gas goes up and as the price starts to go up, right? So the fact that we got it here, in my opinion, was a bit early. Now we're starting to get the dump. Now we're starting to see more production, more injections of natural gas. So that is decreasing the, the price. You know, the supply is going up. Now we're starting to break through a bunch of these levels of support, right? We broke 248, we broke 240, we broke 230, and I talked about in a couple of videos ago how if we were to break 230, this would be a good play for DGAS, which is the opposite of UGAS, which goes up whenever natural gas is going down, right? So that would have been a good play if you were trading that, and I'm sure a bunch of you guys did, right? Because now we're filling the gap down to 220. So I I think here in the short term, right, and based on my analysis, based on my research, I may be completely wrong, right, but I think here in the short term, there is going to be a bit more downside pressure as we start to see more injections, as we start to see more production here for the next couple of weeks. That's what I personally think, two, three weeks. So that means that natural gas may have a bit more downside here in the next coming weeks, maybe down to 220. This is a prominent level of support that we see. We held towards the middle, towards the end of June. We held that level, then we rallied from there. We got all the way down to 220 or 202 rather, which honestly, if we break 220 in the short term, we may be going down to 210. I don't know if we get back to 202, but that is a level of support that we have to consider right now. And in the short term, guys, again, these next two, three weeks, you know, this might have some downwards pressure. DGAS might do well, but then as demand starts to kick in, I'm thinking maybe in November or something like that, we we start to get, 
you know, some cold weather across the Midwest, across the Northeast, which I know it's coming. I'm from New Jersey. We typically get it in November, mid-November, December, those time periods right there. You know, hey, maybe natural gas starts to rally from there, and we may be able to get some good money by trading you gas, which again goes up whenever natural gas goes up. So at this point, all I'm saying, guys, is... This could be a decent opportunity to take a look at you guys here as things are starting to shake out. Because if you look at the chart, realistically, last time we got down to these levels, we almost doubled. Really, we went from 10 to 24 in the matter of a couple of weeks. And this can definitely happen again, again, if we get that demand, if we get that natural gas rally in these cold months. And the fact that we're getting close to that level at $10 where we doubled, I think it's just worth watching right now. We're just watching you guys, watching natural gas to see how things shake out. I personally don't like swing trading these leverage GTFs. I don't recommend it. If you go on the website, you can see that they don't recommend it. But let's be honest, guys. There are people in the community. Let's just let's just be honest. There's people in the community that swing trade this. They don't care that you're not supposed to do it. They just want to make solid money. And honestly, at this point, I think you could make some pretty solid money, but it's very, very risky because let's say we do get that run down to $2 on natural gas. Let's say you buy in here at, at that point point you're going to be down here holding this bag holding it down 20 30 percent and that's happened to a lot of people, which is why it's risky to swing trade this. But if you truly believe that there's going to be a natural gas rally here in the next one to two months, I wouldn't think it's stupid to start buying a little bit of you gas maybe here, maybe a little bit down here. That is if you are into swing trading leverage GTFs. I personally don't do that. Maybe I play it in a, in, a, in a fun account that I have a little bit of money in. Maybe I throw in maybe a couple hundred, maybe a thousand dollars that I'm willing to play with. Maybe I'll do that and maybe I'll document it with you guys here on the YouTube channel. But if I'm playing a lot of like a big position like I typically do on my swing trades, I'm not looking to swing trade something like this because the risk is just too crazy. I'm looking to day trade it. But hey, if you have that money, the play money that you're willing to lose, or if you're just risky, you're a risky person, risky girl, risky gal, or guy, whatever, you can swing trade it. That's up to you. But me personally, I'm not, but I just figured to just let you guys in on that, just my personal opinion and kind of how you can look at this. So that's it. You guys, natural gas, just expect not expect a rally. I'm not saying there's going to be a rally, but just understand that there could be a rally and there's a lot of money to be made and just watch it at, you know, right now. Watch the price action. Keep an eye on these reports. Tomorrow, Thursday, every Thursday, 10.30 Eastern Standard Time, AM, there's a report that comes out and this affects the price of natural gas and affects you gas and, of course, D gas. So that's kind of my two cents. Those are my thoughts right now. I think there's a lot of potential, but there's a lot of risk as well. Well, just do your own research, guys. Do your own due diligence. Don't buy because I'm thinking about buying um, in my play account that I'll show you guys on the YouTube channel. And, you know, that's it, guys. Just some food for thought. So let's talk about some other stocks very quickly here. I do have two, three, uh, two or three more that I want to talk about that I'm pulling up here on my uh, phone. So let me just pull these up. I think one of them was NVIDIA. Let me just pull it up right here. NVIDIA, NVDA. So NVDA right now is looking pretty decent, right? We got a break out of this 178 level. And honestly, at this point, last time we got we got above 178, we filled up to $186. We've actually done this multiple times in the past. We did it once about a month ago. Excuse me. And another time back in the March month uh, into the April month of 2019, right? We broke above 175. We ran up all the way to around 186, which is roughly the channel that we're in right now. So the fact that we held this 50 SMA, we also held the 180 SMA here on the four hour. We're showing some momentum to the upside here. I think this could definitely fill the gap. There's potential from 180 to 186, which offers around a 3% margin of 
of profit. But let's say we maybe even pull down and retest this level. That could maybe give you a better entry point. But then again, that might not be the best sign if you're looking to trade this as a momentum play. For me personally, I'd like to get in um, in the 180s and fill up to 186 on a uh, momentum swing. If we get down, maybe start testing these levels at that point, this can be slowly turning into um, a bearish pattern, right? Which is something that I wouldn't want to trade. But anyway, NVIDIA is looking pretty decent right now um, from about 175 to about 185. Definitely seeing some potential there. Tesla is at a resistance right now that I'm thinking if it breaks, there's huge potential for a overall breakout in the stock, right? If we pull out the support resistance tool very quickly, we draw out this level here. You guys notice how we're at this level of resistance at around 244, 245 that we were getting rejected at multiple times over the past couple of months. You guys can see here in the beginning of July, we got rejected all throughout the, uh, what, what month was this? The end, actually more towards the middle actually of September, all the way to right now, literally right now, we've been getting rejected by this level. So I think if we pop We'll fill the gap up to 260, no problem. I think this could definitely happen. I think it's worth watching, hence why it is on my watch list. So another one that I'm watching, not too good of a, a technicals here, but we are getting a pullback. This could be a bit bearish. So I'm looking at this as a potential, maybe a short play. But if we hold the 180 SMA here support, this could be a play where maybe we hold 52, fill back up the 55. This is more of a whichever direction type of play that it takes, right? And by that, I mean, you know, if we end up breaking this 180 SMA, this could be a short option, right? A put option, maybe. We can go short on the stock. But let's say we launch off this 180 SMA and ultimately break the double top. This could be a very bullish move that if we zoom out a bit to the one-year chart, you guys can see if we break 70 or $55, I've been talking about this for weeks on Amazon. At v sporadically across these videos, we can end up filling up to maybe 61 to 62 dollars. So I think this is worth watching. This is probably more of a play that's not going to be good in the next couple of days. This might take about a week or two to, to wiggle out to play out, but I still think it's worth watching. Ticker symbol ATVI. So that's pretty much it for this video, guys. I don't want to drag it on too long. The basis of this video was you guys and natural gas, and of course, the overall market update so if you guys found value in this video if you did enjoy it feel free to go down below hit that like button consider subscribing if you do want to see further content from me and don't forget to join our discord group chat and our facebook group and follow me on instagram there's going to be a giveaway on the instagram in a couple of weeks here that you want to be a part of so i'll catch you all in the next video thanks again for watching peace out